Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the quadratic formula. Um, this is something you learned in Algebra 1. It shows up again in Algebra 2, and we're going to talk a lot about it in geometry. kind of comes up here and there. Um, if you remember right, the quadratic formula is a way to solve any quadratic equation um, and get an answer for the value of x, where the parabola, because that's what a quadratic does, it looks like a parabola, it's going to cross the x-axis. Um, this will work for any parabola, and although factoring is much easier, sometimes not everything's factorable, and you just don't always feel like factoring. So this is this is a tried and true way of doing it every single time. It only works for quadratics. What's going to happen? X will equal the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. Ooh, it didn't show up there. Let's go. Let's get back into focus. There we go. Um, it's all going to be over 2a. Now, when we do this, we're going to come up with some numbers here. So if I do like x squared plus 10x minus 6 is equal to 0. And again, I don't know if this is going to be factorable. It doesn't look like it's going to be factorable. I know my a value is 1. It's the number in front of x squared. This is my b value and this will be my c value. Okay, so it's, it's actually very straightforward when you go through this. I got some problems here that we are gonna go through um, and talk about this. Now, I just made these up a little bit before um, I went online and made this video, so we'll see what happens here. Um, x squared plus three x minus five. Now, if I were to graph this on a calculator, on a graphing calculator, which is something you're gonna use a lot in algebra two, We go on, this is a graphing calculator of x squared plus 3x minus 5. Okay, what we're looking for here, we're looking for where it crosses the x-axis here and here. Now it looks like it crosses around 1 and it looks like it crosses around 4. Okay, so let's let's see what happens, or sorry, negative 4, so let's see what happens. So. My A value is 1, my B value is 3, my C value is negative 5. So if I were to plug this into the quadratic formula, I don't know why it's trying to focus again. If I were to plug this into the quadratic formula, X will equal the opposite of B plus or minus B squared minus 4 times A times C all of that over 2 times a. So this will be negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared is 9. A negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 is plus 20. All of this over 2. So doing a little bit more simplifying. Of negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. That means this will go into negative 3 over 2 minus the square root of 29 over 2, and negative 3 over 2 plus the square root of 29 over 2. So if I were to find some values here, oops, a negative, oops, I don't want that one, let's try a negative, 3 divided by 2 minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. I'll be at that point there. You can see the x value is negative 4.19. The y value is 0. Do another value there. Going negative 3 over 2 plus the square root of 29 divided by 2. And there's your other value right there, 1.19. Okay, so this is a tried and true way. This will get you a value every single time that you have a quadratic formula. Okay, let's try another one here. X squared plus 8x plus 10. Okay. The A value is 1, the B value is 8, the C value is 10. So I plug this in, X will equal the opposite of B plus or minus B 
b squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. All this over 2 times 1. It's negative 8 plus or minus 64 minus 40. All that over 2. 64 minus 40 would be 24. Now we could simplify this even further. So I have negative 8 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 would really be a square root of 4 times 6 over 2. Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. This would be 2 square root of 6 over 2. The square root of 4 is 2 over 2. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 6, which will break down into negative 4 plus the square root of 6, negative 4 minus the square root of 6. Those are two x values. So if I were to plug this in to the calculator, it. I did a value here. So I have negative 4 plus the square root of 6. So yeah, right there. And then again, oops, let's try, let's try a different way here. So it is not factorable. There's no two factor of 10 that will give you 8. So this is a way to get those two values of 0. And again, this will come up again and again and again in Algebra 2 and even into pre-calculus if you make it that far, if you decide to go that far. Now, if you look at the next one, x squared plus 6x plus 5. The a value is 1. The b value is 6. The c value is 5. So x would equal the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. All this over 2a. So negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 20 over 2. So that means x will equal negative 6 plus or minus square of 16 over 2 and hopefully our, everyone's ears are perking up here and say hey I know that square of 16 this will be negative 6 plus or minus 4 over 2 so really that will go into two different things we'll have negative 6 minus 4 over 2 negative 6 plus 4 over 2 well negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10 over 2 or negative 5 negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1 so those are my two answers there. How the, before we had two answers, we have two answers here also. So if I were to graph this, so yeah, even though it is factorable, you can still use a quadratic formula. So I have negative five. Oops, I thought I pressed here. So negative 5 and 0 and then again at negative 1 and 0. So it is factorable but sometimes you might not feel like factoring so you can use the quadratic formula for that. Now in the next video I'm going to be using a process called completing the square and I'll start using uh, algebra tiles first. So keep that in mind. Um, the quadratic formula is review. You shouldn't have any issues with it. If you do, please let me know. I hope you have a great day.